Saul Hoffenbrittle, partner at CBNA, a Finn Partners company in the global education practice, and Jackie Lipson, partner at Finn Partners in the global education practice, talks to host Doug Simon on PR's Top Pros Talk. So let's start with you. What is your top takeaway from the 2025 Education Marketing Trends Report? So every year we conduct this research. This is our sixth annual report that we're releasing. And we survey education business leaders, education marketers, education business owners, and sales executives. And what we saw in, in this year's survey results was something that jumped off the page to me is a, a sincere and growing interest in state-based marketing in addition to a national marketing and communications presence. That's great. And Jackie, you know, there's obviously so much focus on the change in government and what that means. Um, will that be somewhat lessened by the fact that so much of the focus needs to be on a state level compared to what's happening at the federal level? I don't think so. You know, this tension between federal and state has been ever thus. It's the beauty of our federalism system. Um, but, you know, it remains to be seen what approach this administration takes, whether modifying legislation, renewing uh, legislation, budget restrictions, or perhaps new policy or competition for funding. Yeah. And so we were discussing earlier that, you know, the people who are in the education business are really seeing things differently at a state level and state specific marketing is becoming more important. How does that change how you execute campaigns? I think there's a, a growing understanding, Doug, of the fact that we live in a, a large um, a large country, diverse country, and it's not homogenous. Education is not a monolith from state to state. And education business leaders are increasingly understanding that. So it changes the work that we do and it adds a layer to it. Certainly we want national exposure, national awareness. We also need to create campaigns that are bespoke to the conditions within individual states. Yeah, it's really interesting that you say that because we're seeing very similar trends in the satellite media tours we conduct, whether it's using multiple spokespeople or specific to states and regions, or even different emphasis and different content is happening. So Jackie, what should communicators be focusing on in this new environment? Generally speaking, I think uh, we're going to see a lot of folks um, getting a, you know, a uh, much more familiar with civics um, and understanding, like Saul said, what's going on locally and how this complex system uh, works. Uh, perhaps we'll see uh, an uptick in um, folks hiring local government uh, relations experts. And I'm really hopeful that we're going to see expansion of uh, the education beats in, in regional uh, papers. Interesting. And do you think the coverage of education topics will be shifting based on all of this? No. Education reporters are really special. They are here to tell us what's working and what's not working. I don't see that changing tremendously. Perhaps the topics, you know, here and there. Um, I do wonder if we'll see some more of those explainers coming from reporters as they find that they're having to uh, be, you know, educating uh, their readers about how this system uh, all works. I share Jackie's hope that we see a, a revival of that kind of grassroots community-based education journalism. That's something that we're big supporters of, uh, both from consuming our own media uh, and you know trying to support uh, those folks financially as well. So uh, I think focusing on the local issues and doing coverage of what's working in school districts is always important. It's probably going to be even more important going forward. So I hope there's support for that. I can get your take on whether you feel PR should be have supremacy over marketing or back and forth. That could be a whole other topic for discussion. But at a minimum, what's your take on what PR teams should be teaching marketing teams so they can be more effective in this space? I don't think there's any real teaching to to that needs to take place, but I do know that you know in the work that we do uh, in PR, one verb tops all other verbs, and that is earn. We earn our way into the conversation by knowing what's going on, by having a deep understanding of the issues, and uh, making sure that what we're offering reporters connects to what they're you know the storytelling they're trying to do. And so perhaps we'll see um, you know a, a marketing professional. Uh, doing a little bit of a deeper dive into the, the issues and the topics. What will be helpful going forward um, is what I've come to think of as an exercise in radical empathy, 
right and understanding the position of our peers and and uh, and having empathy for them and also empathy for the people who are working in the schools uh, and focusing on their needs and supporting them and uniting around that shared effort and that shared movement i think that will serve everybody really well great and do each of you have any final thoughts you'd like to add to this conversation really interesting stuff Working in the education sector doesn't happen by accident. Uh, it is really a privilege. Um, you know, every couple of years, depending on what's going on, people stop and take a look in our direction. I hope we'll have that, you know, that happened during COVID. I hope with this, um, the shifts we're seeing with this administration, we'll see some sustained interest in the education sector. And like Saul and I both said, um, you know, uh, if there's funding to be uh, that's available, we would encourage folks to give it to our nonprofit and um, trade news rooms to really beef up the, the those staffs locally. And echoing Jackie's sentiments, it's a deliberate choice uh, to work in the education field, a choice that we make every day and that our clients and partners make every day because we feel this is some of the most important work that's happening and will continue to happen. So that's what motivates us. That's what motivates our clients uh, is, is focusing on the learners uh, and doing everything that we can to support them and their educators um, so they can have a successful experience at school. Hopefully this will be a successful experience for our viewers. I'm guessing it most certainly will. Thanks to both of you for being part of the show. Thanks, Doug.